One of the things we hear with floods, actually with any weather hazard, but with floods in particular, is this idea of return period. Whether it's the 50-year return, or the 100-year return period, or the 500-year flood, or the 1,000-year flood. So let's um, kind of break that down, what it really means. When we say the 100-year flood, we, meaning the meteorological community, we don't mean that they come exactly 100 years apart, or if you had a flood last year, it's going to be 100 years before you have one again. All that really means is there's a 1% chance, 1 over 100, in any given year of having a flood of this magnitude. So a 500-year flood would mean there's a 1 in 500 chance in any given year of having a flood in that magnitude. Now to go along with that is all the uncertainty. In the United States, and in particular in the Western United States, communities haven't been around monitoring their streams for very long. So we don't really have a good feel, statistically speaking, of what the 100-year or the 500-year flood is in any particular area. We make guesses, but I wouldn't consider those the most robust statistics. So think of it this way. A 500-year flood is such a big flood that it's five times less likely to occur than the 100-year flood. And a thousand year flood is so unusually big that it's 10 times less likely to occur than the 100 year flood. So that's when you hear someone say, oh, that was the 1000 year flood. You could guess that what they're really saying is that was really unusual. Chances of that happening again are low, but they're not zero. And it might not be another thousand years before it happens again. The other thing with return period, 100 year, 500 year floods, is they assume that both the watershed and climate are stationary, meaning that there's no further development in the watershed, there's no further urban development, because that changes how floods can occur. And it also means that a future climate isn't going to be different than the current climate. And we know that both of those assumptions aren't correct, but yet those are the assumptions that go into planning for the 500-year and the 100-year flood.